you know, I love doing this stuff so much. And I almost love it more when things screw up because it gives you such a great opportunity to get creative and figure things out. And isn't it fantastic when you can actually put that on camera and share it with people? I can hardly wait to see what your comments are. I can't make them all this funny, so enjoy it while it lasts. Hi, today we're going to talk about how to back a large piece of fabric with a felt backing. I've had a lot of requests for talking about working with larger pieces of fabric, especially when it comes to backing them and stabilizing them, possibly because they're going to be finished as quilts and possibly because the goal is to get a piece that really hangs nice and straight and looks gorgeous on the wall as a piece of art. So what I'm starting with today is this botanical print. I did this on my heat press. If you haven't watched that video, you might enjoy watching that on this channel, because working with the heat press revolutionizes botanical printing, but that's another story. In this case, this is a piece of silk noil. It has a little bit of texture. It's, um, I don't know, I don't know how wide that is. It's probably 44. And that's uh, maybe about 36. So those are the approximate sizes. And I'm going to back it with a charcoal gray craft felt that I buy online at Joann Fabrics. I don't get anything for endorsing them. You can use any color felt you like. This is a nice felt. I like the charcoal. It's a nice neutral color for the backing of a piece like this. And it's also... Um, a little more expensive, like maybe, I don't know, $8.99 a yard, and it's 72 inches wide. So it's a real deal to buy it. I buy it by the bowl, frankly. It's under my tabletop, too. In any event, it's thick enough that it makes a really nice surface. So you don't really want to go for the least expensive felt you can find. All right? And my fusible of choice is Misty Fuse. In case you're not familiar with the fusible, there are lots of different kinds. This is my preference. It doesn't have a paper backing, so there's no waste. And it's very, very um, lightweight. And it's not real sticky, so it's easy to sew through it on the sewing machine. And I've used it for at least two or three dozen pieces, some of which are literally as large as my tabletop here. So big pieces. So it's great for all kinds of things, and I buy it by the bolt because it is used so frequently in the work that I do. Now, in order to use the fusible and apply it to the fabric and to the felt, I'm going to bring out my goddess sheet. My goddess sheet is a Teflon sheet that mistyfuse.com sells. So shout out to Iris Carp, I just love her. I love Misty Fuse. I love the products. I don't get paid anything for saying that either. They're just really good and they make your work go so much easier. And when you're working big, let's face it, you've got to have the right tools to do this because otherwise it's such a pain. So a big sheet like this is a good idea. And it's an investment, so take care of it. Okay, now contrary to what a lot of people would tell you, the way to do this, and there is a right way, the way to do this is to put fusible on the back of the fabric and also on the felt. If I just put the fusible down between the two pieces and iron it, it'll stick it together for a while, but if I roll it up to send it to a show or I roll it up to store it somewhere for a while, there's a very good chance it's going to delaminate. And when it delaminates, you're in trouble, especially if you've done some stitching or something else decorative to it. So this is a lot like the idea of contact cement. You want to put the fusible on the, you want to fuse it to the fabric, and then you want to fuse it to the felt. So I'm going to do the felt first. Of course, you can do this with smaller pieces too. And I think I've probably demoed that, and if I haven't, we're going to shoot that again sometime soon. But it, working larger is, it, it's, it's a challenge. I'm not going to tell you that it isn't. So what I'm going to do first is roll the Misty Fuse out. 
and trim it. The reason I have the goddess sheet underneath is because I don't want to get fusible on my tabletop and I don't want to get fusible like on my drop cloth and I don't want to get fusible on my iron. So I put the goddess sheet down to protect the table and then I smooth the misty fuse out like this. Now I cut this piece of felt slightly larger than the fabric so it's not going all the way to the edge and that's okay and it's not actually very square either because um, in my book it's not hip to be square. So what I'm doing here is filling as much of this with misty fuse as I can and then I'll trim it all later when I put the two pieces together. Now I have a piece of parchment paper here and parchment paper is treated with kind of a silicone surface so it won't stick to the misty fuse either. So I put the parchment paper down to protect the iron. And then I'm going to iron over the misty fuse. And what's happening, and the misty fuse, by the way, doesn't have a right or wrong side. So it doesn't matter which side you put down. I'm going to heat this up. And I can see how I'm doing by peeling this over. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to heat that evenly. Peel it up. and move over to the last third. And then I'm going to add more Misty Fuse and repeat this process with the Misty Fuse until I have filled this entire piece of fabric. Now, I'm going to talk you through it and then we're going to speed up the camera and I'll finish this and then come back and move on to the fabric. But what I want you to recognize is that when I fill this little third that's left or this little section right here, I'm not going to cut the misty fuse just to fit that little section. I could, would save misty fuse, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to put the misty fuse, well, I'll just go ahead and do it. I'm just going to overlap it. That's the beauty of the misty fuse. It's thin enough that I can do this, and it's not going to make it really stiff here. And you don't have to, this is totally personal preference. Mainly I do it this way because it's fast. But you can certainly save on fusible by cutting this right here and taking this piece off if you want to. That's totally up to you. So let me heat this and then we'll get out the fabric and move to that next. Okay, so there you have it. It's been completely fused. Now I'm going to put this off to the side and I'm going to start on the fabric. Okay, here's my fabric. Wrong side up. I did that once. I put it on the front. Oh my god, what a mess. If in doubt, take a deep breath, double check. Wrong side up. Got it, Jane. Okay, I'm going to do essentially the same thing I did with the misty fuse and the felt. Run it to the edges. And fabric, you know, in general, whether you have fabric you dyed or whether your fabric that you botanical print, whatever you did to it, a lot of the time it goes off square 
And when that happens, you're going to have to square it up later, whether you put a binding or an edging on it or not. So again, this isn't always going all the way to the edge. And I've got plenty of leeway when it comes to, like, if, if I needed a little misty fuse and there wasn't some later when I was putting the two surfaces together, I could cut a little strip and just tuck it in. So this, this stage, where we are right now, this is pretty straightforward. Again, it doesn't take long for it to melt. There is no right or wrong side. And make sure you cover the whole area that you're working on completely with the iron so that it all gets evenly melted. And you do have to be careful with the fabric because if you pull this up and the fabric falls back on the part you just heated up, it can stick the parts together. Sometimes they're a little hard to pull apart. So you do want to be a little bit careful when you're peeling the paper off so you don't accidentally get the, the fabric folding on itself, which wouldn't happen with the felt because the felt is stiffer. And you will notice, or maybe you haven't even thought about it yet, but I'm not using any steam. Because the parchment paper is not porous, so the steam couldn't go through the parchment paper anyhow. So there's no steam needed at this particular stage of the game, although we will need it later. If you steamed, it wouldn't hurt anything. You'd just get a facial. Okay, so I've got that first section done. Slide this toward myself. It's a little bit harder to see where the fusible ended, right about there, which is another reason why it's not a bad thing if you overlap a little bit so you can make sure you don't have a gap, because that would be bad. You would not want a gap where you didn't have any fusible later. So I'm gonna do the same thing that I did with the felt overlap that a little bit right here and whoops try not to cut a hole in the mat that wouldn't be cool and if the misty fuse folds a little bit like that after you're finished cutting it make sure you deal with that Otherwise, you'll have a, another, another place where maybe you don't have fusible and it'll be a problem eventually. So the whole goal of this is just to cover the entire back with Misty Fuse. Make sure it's uniformly heated. I'll finish that up here real quick and then we'll put the two together. Okay, so now we've completed the fabric. It's, I think of these now, these two surfaces are activated, so the next step is to put them together, and that's where the tricky part comes in. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is take the goddess sheet off the table and put it away, because now I don't need it anymore. I don't have any unactivated misty fuse around. Put the misty fuse away so it's out of the picture. And I'm going to work on my table. My table has uh, that same gray felt, layer of that over plywood, and then this clean sheet that acts as a drop cloth. And I'm going to need to give this a lot of steam, so having this kind of a backing and having a nice firm surface is, is pretty useful. But the goddess sheet goes away. 
All right, so I've got my felt and I'm going to put it down first. And you can see how it can stick to itself. I guess I'll work horizontally. So I put this down and I make it nice and smooth. And then I'm going to introduce the fabric on top of it. Now, these two surfaces can stick together. This is going to be a little bit nerve-wracking. It's still nerve-wracking for me, and I've done this 40 times. So what I'm going to do is lay this out and try not to get it wrinkled. You see how it starts to stick to itself. Well, <laughs> it's a little bit like wrestling an alligator. If you have, if you know somebody who could help you, <laughs> like a camera woman, it might not be a bad idea to ask for help. Oh my, let's start over. How do you do it? Could you pin it? No, oh, sh turn off the camera. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> oh, f Okay. Okay, I'm having more trouble than I usually have. And I think it's because it's so warm in here that the fusible isn't quite as, uh, it's stickier than it usually is. And, you know, in my defense, it is 106 degrees outside right now, and it has been for three weeks. So that, I think that's playing a factor because I've never had this much trouble. So I'm going to try doing it vertically. And I'm going to start with this at the top. We, you've got to get a lot colder in here. It's not going to work. It's so warm in here right now. The fusible is staying sticky. And I, you just watched me wrestle with it. But I love problem solving in real time. And if that's true for me right now, that could be true for you. But I might have just come up with a brilliant solution that is going to make this whole thing easier anyhow. And wouldn't that be fabulous? So here's what I've done. So my theory is, we'll see if it works, that if I cover the bottom part of this with parchment paper temporarily, then this can't stick to it, and it'll make it easier for me to adjust it there, and then I can peel the parchment paper out and smooth it as I go. Voila, we'll see if it works the way I'm imagining it in my mind. So these are big pieces of parchment paper. You get it at the grocery store. Don't buy the dollar store brand. It's different. It doesn't really work the same. It screws up your iron, all right? You can reuse it over and over again. So when I'm done with this, I can just roll it back on the roll and put it away. And this might be the new go-to every single time. So now what, what's happening is that I can take this piece of fabric and it isn't going to stick to all of that felt. And my arms aren't long enough, so I'm still going to pull this closer. But now I should be able to line this up. Now, what you don't want to do, don't think, oh, great idea. I'll just fuse that and leave it there right now. Don't do that, because you'll end up with a wrinkle in the middle that you won't be able to get rid of. Now, sometimes when you put the fusible on, it can actually pull the fabric off grain a little bit. And that's why it almost goes without saying that you're going to lose a little bit of uh, Eventually, you may lose a, a little bit of your edge because you need to square it up later. But that's kind of the nature of working with fabric. And if you want to, you know, I said don't, um, don't heat it up, but you could get a pin if you want to and put that, you know, that's the beauty of a padded table. I can pin right into that 
to hold it there so it doesn't pull as I work to smooth this out to the next level. I'll peel this, off, this piece off. You see, this is where you have to be so careful. You smooth with your hand like this. It does require some patience. Maybe this is how I developed my patience, I don't know. But you don't want to accidentally, you see how I'm lifting? You don't want to accidentally smooth a wrinkle into it. So I'm good now, down to here. I can fold this back and pull off this last piece of parchment. Now I've got to take those pins out so I can slide this up. Smooth to the edges. And then what you're doing, just as a rule of thumb, is smoothing from the center to the sides and toward the bottom. And if you get a little wrinkle like that, you can smooth it with your fingers. And you can always peel up the edge and lift away from the surface and then smooth it again. You can put your hand underneath and work back to a place where there's a little bubble and smooth that out. Okay, so part of what has happened to me here, which I don't care. There's a difference between what my work is and who I am. It's good for you to see this because it could happen to you. So this fabric definitely got a little bit wonky. That could have been from the fusible being so warm. I never had any idea that that could be such a big deal, but obviously it is. So there will be quite a bit of trimming here, but I haven't actually lost as much of the fabric as it appears might be true. I just have an awful big section of felt to cut away on this side. And I can trim that all up and make it square later. So I'm going to smooth that out. You can see it's a little bit of a workout. And all right, excellent. The uh, parchment paper, good idea. We're working on this all the time, aren't we? Okay, now though, we're not finished. So I have plenty of steam in my iron, don't I? <laughs> so serious, serious now. I'm gonna start in the middle and I'm not just pressing like you'd press a shirt. I'm gonna steam it and I'm gonna let my hand bleed. So I'm actually gonna pull this a little bit closer so I can reach it. And I want my hand to lead the iron so that I can be sure to smooth out any wrinkles that I will encounter, and I might. So I'm not pressing real hard. I am giving it consistent steam because what I want to do is fuse those two layers, the fusible that's on the fabric and the fusible that's on the felt. I want to fuse those two things together, and I want them to fuse so they're permanent and they don't delaminate later. And I'm going to, so I've worked out from the center to the top edge. And then I'm going to work out to the side. And I'm going to keep working out to the side and I'm going to let my hand lead. And I'm going to get over here near where the fusible is. And I got to be real careful because I don't want to get that on my iron. So I get my parchment paper again. And I put my parchment paper over here. Now, I don't want to put parchment paper and iron over the whole thing with parchment because you'll iron, invariably, you'll iron a wrinkle into it. But when I get over here along the edge, then I need the parchment paper so I can, oh, I can, so I can iron over where the fusible is still exposed. Okay? 
So now I'm back to the center. I can finish, I'll, I'll, I'll work toward the top. So now I've fused right to about here. So I'm gonna let, let my hand lead. Let my hand lead. And when I get out to this edge, there's a little bit of fusible exposed. So I need to put the parchment paper down. I'm gonna let my hand lead. Put this down so I can do that corner and keep the fusible off the iron. So I let the hand lead. Let the hand lead. And when I get to this edge, I introduce the parchment. So I can make sure that edge is well stuck. And as long as you let the hand lead, as long as you let the hand lead, you know, it really becomes kind of a meditation. I mean, I've certainly run the gamut here between hilarity and total frustration. And now this fabulous sense of calm because I have actually managed to fuse this large piece of fabric to this piece of felt without a single wrinkle. And you can do it too, and you can do it with any fabric. Those are the tips. Don't forget to put the parchment in between if, if it's warm and your fusible is giving you fits. Roll it up and use it again later. And once you get it all down and you've smoothed it with your hands, use plenty of steam so you know you're fusing both surfaces together and let the hand lead so that you don't end up with any wrinkles. And then what I'll do next, <clears throat> which I won't do on camera, but um, I'll probably bring this piece back and do another video where I show you how to actually put the, the, the uh, aluminum slats on the back to hang it to make it look really beautiful and, and, and um, even. So what I'll do next, I'll tell you now and then you'll see it the next time you join me. I will trim this up. I'll trim this up so the piece is completely square. Well, it'll be a rectangle, but so all the edges are square. And then I will consider whether I'm going to add some stitching of what I'm going to do. And then to finish it, I will put a, an aluminum slat that has holes drilled in it on the back so that I can hang it. So I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, uh, subscribe. I can't promise they'll all be funny. Think about throwing a couple dollars into PayPal to help support our efforts here. And most of all, make some comments and let me know if you've done this yourself, if you have any other tips that work for you. And, uh, I'm just curious about how it goes for you when I share these tips, and I sure do hope they're helpful.